Hi, I'm Juan Camilo Estrada and welcome to Epicentro. Before arriving to our rate, coffee is cultivated, harvested and roasted. The first step is to remove the seed from the fruit. Each coffee fruit is composed of different layers, the external skin called exocarp, the pulp or mesocarp, the mucilago, which is a viscous layer under the pulp that provides the sweetness of the coffee, the parchment or endocarp and the tegument. Then the producer, before roasting, chooses the processing that he wishes to carry out on his coffee, honey, natural or washed. George Escobar explains to us what they consist of. They are processes that are carried out on the farm that make the coffee have different attributes. And depending on how the coffee is harvested or fermented on the farm, it has certain characteristic notes. When we speak of washed processes, it means that the honey that surrounds the bean is removed. In general, the coffee for which Colombia is known worldwide is for the soft washed coffee. It is a coffee with notes of cinnamon, chocolate, red or yellow fruit. So what they do is a detachment of the mucilage and basically it is to protect our profile at a world level. That which I am telling you about with the notes of cinnamon, chocolate, red or yellow fruits. That is what the soft wash coffee refers to. When Colombia started to wash its coffee, it was the first country that started to do so. Our country broke the market at that moment and introduced washed coffees to the world. These coffees have much more sugar presence. They have to be roasted in a different way. They are going to be coffees with a lot of fruit presence and this profile has to be maintained in the roasting process. The honey process is a semi-wash process and unlike the previous one, this bean does not have the mucilage removed. It is taken to a fermentation process and is dried with honey. The bean is a little more pigmented and that honey adheres much more to the bean and makes its flavors different with more fruit presence much more expressive it is a coffee in which very little water is actually used and at that moment we can take much more care of the environment with this coffee process the natural coffee is a coffee that is harvested ripe from the tree. It is fermented and as it is left, it is taken to the drying process. The skin is not removed or pulp. It is dried in this way. It takes around 15 or 20 days to dry. It is sometimes difficult due to the climatic conditions. Then they are already coffees with a touch of liquor, more chocolatey and the density tends to decrease. So it is much more delicate bean and it is necessary to roast them in a special way. We have to be very careful because there are coffees that can burn easily. So we have to know how to apply the heat in them. In reality, one is very surprised with all the coffees. One does not always find similar notes in the coffees. They vary according to the processes. But in reality, all of them have very special characteristics. Now that we are clear about the processes of coffee, it is necessary to carry out the roasting procedure in order to develop the organoleptic characteristics. Those that we appreciate through the senses such as the aroma or the flavors, George Escobar tells us what his work as a coffee roaster consists of. It is basically like transforming people's dreams. Beyond the technical part, here people come to us so that we can give them back a well-finished product. Now, it is to have in our hands the responsibility to correspond to all the work that comes from behind. That is why I think that it is a very delicate process in which I have felt that I have developed very well. We roast the highest roasts around 180 or 181 degrees. In general, the people that work with us or who roast the coffee with us do not usually roast very high coffees. Our idea is to work with specialty coffees and that is why they are almost always medium roasts. If there is a coffee grower who suddenly does not know the genetics of his coffee, we do a cupping process and based on that we define which roast is suitable for that coffee. We generally do not roast for more than 10 minutes. It is closely related to the sufficiency of the machine. This is a machine that transmits energy very effectively, so we roast very quickly. 
para Jorge. For George, roasting means transforming dreams. The step to follow so that the producer's coffee explodes in flavors. Once a roaster has chosen the bean, he chooses the ideal type of roasting for each coffee. Let's see which one exists. Existing. There is a great variety and they even have different names. We are guided by light roasts, medium high roasts or high roasts. Ya dependiendo pues de... Depending on the coffee or the process that the coffee has, we determine which type of roast to make. When we make light roasts, what we want is that the coffee is very expressive because there are coffees that are very fruity. So what we do is to develop in a short time with a lot of energy so that those attributes of the coffee are not lost. Likewise, when we advance in the roasting process, and if we raise the roasting too much, all that delicate thing that the coffee has will be lost. So the ideal is that this profile is maintained in the coffee and that we are not going to mistreat it. In the medium roast, what we are looking for is to caramelize the sugar. The bean has a great presence of sugar, so what we are looking for is that the element present in the bean remains present. That we are not going to elevate it too much or make it bitter, but that we give a nice color to the coffee, that at the moment of tasting it, you can feel the sugar that the bean has and the fruity notes that it has. In general, this is the type of roast that people look for the most, and it is the one that most come here to this process. This is a medium roast. The color of the bean is not a dark roast. It is rather opaque. Tiene gran it has a great presence of sugar. Precisely the color of this coffee is given by the sugar that is present in it. When we caramelize sugars, they tend to turn this color. Es un grano que... It is a bean that is even because from the farm, they usually have a very well done traceability. What we are looking for is to protect everything that comes from the farm y cuidar... and protect the finished product. El alto, eh... The high roast is used mainly for espressos because the coffee has a lot of acidity. We do the high roast is to caramelize a little more, to lower the acidity of the coffee so that it is not felt so much in the beverage. Ya vimos. We have already seen it. Preserving the flavor of the coffee bean goes hand in hand with the type of roast that is, that is chosen. For this reason, to carry out tests and to have the opinion of a roaster is fundamental. During roasting, some reactions and physical changes take place in the bean, forming the substances that attribute the sensory qualities to the coffee. But what are these changes? Initially, what we do is to know the genetics of the bean, that is to say, what kind of roasting is required by the client. The humidity is a transmitter of energy, and the density refers to the hardness of the bean, how much energy we can apply to that bean. From there, what we do is load the machine, register in the program how much coffee we are going to roast, the humidity, the density, and design the roasting curve. The bean undergoes several physical and chemical changes as it goes through a process of dehydration, a caramelization process, and a development process. When we talk about the development of the coffee, we refer to the moment in which the bean is cracking and begins to express all its attributes. That is the most delicate part of the roasting process because we can leave the coffee raw or it can burn easily, so it is necessary to do a sensory monitoring, watching how the smell and the color of the coffee changes. In the first stage, there is a dehydration of the bean with losses between 60 and 90% of the water. At that moment we begin to feel a smell similar to the one generated when roasting breads or cereals. Then comes a caramelization changing its color, giving aromatic attributions to the flavor of the coffee. In the development we will hear a sound with a rupture of the structure of the grain. 
quedando con una is originated leaving it with a more glassy appearance to understand better let's see the step by step of the roasting of the coffee initially what we do when we are going to start a roasting process is to review the data of the coffee the humidity the density and how much coffee we are going to roast then in this part we have already weighed the coffee that we are going to roast in this case we are going to roast about 25 kilos initially what we do is to load this part on top of the roaster which is called hopper Once we have loaded the upper part, what we do is to look for the starting temperature. Then we are going to lower the temperature of the machine because now it is a little high and this way we avoid that the coffee goes to suffer. Once we have the starting temperature, we start the program and we are going to start with a burner at 50%. The revolutions per minute of the drum at 45% and with the air at 95%. We are going to enter at 170 degrees of temperature. Once the coffee has entered the machine, it has a sensory that sends all the information to us to this Cartesian plane that is located here. El tostador. The roaster is responsible for setting the roasting guidelines, heat, hot air intensity and therefore the final result of the coffee. Now in the market there are ideal systems to control the final color of the roast. The color is very important. Importante. In fact, it is a consequence of the application of all the processes. Previously, George told us that he used a program that had a Cartesian plane. Let's see how it works. He graphs on the plane everything that is happening in the machine and how the temperature of the grain is behaving. Then in the machine, I have three controls. The burner, the power, which is the revolutions per minute of the drum and the air. Every time I make a movement, he makes a roasting history and he will graph everything that is happening inside. With that, we design a roasting curve that serves as a reference so that when we roast that coffee again, we can be guided by that curve. They are not always the same roasts because they do not always come in the same conditions, the same humidity and density. But it serves us as a reference to be able to develop a roast equal to the other one. We are getting closer to the exit point. Look that the bean is already very different. It already has a characteristic smell and very different from when we introduced it. We based ourselves more on sensory issues because what we do when we are roasting is to smell the coffee to look for the point where it is more expressive and then make the decision to cut the roasting process to be able to sustain what we find. Those fruity or caramel notes that we have detected in the monitoring. Here at this point, what is happening is that the coffee starts to release energy and starts to sound as if there were a trumpet because we go from applying energy to a point where the bean releases it. The bean can no longer support it and begins to release that energy, and that is called the crack or development point. It is the most delicate stage in the roasting process because here the bean has already undergone a great physical change, and what we are looking for is to find the optimum point in which the coffee is more expressive.
ya el proceso siguiente. The next process, when we take the coffee out of the roaster, is to cool it in a timely manner because the coffee continues to gain temperature, continues to gain energy, and what we need is to cut the development process and to maintain the profile of the coffee. The machine underneath what it has is an air extractor that absorbs the hot air. It takes it out through the ducts and makes the coffee cool down faster in order to sustain the profile that we find it in so that it does not continue cooking. El tostar. Roasting can be compared to the operation of cooking food, obtaining different flavors with the use of the same raw materials. Es muy probable. It is probable that in the future we will begin to see more innovations in the production of artisan coffee. Now, when the roasted bean has, to, has been left to rest, it is placed in a large container. The idea is to let it stabilize, since through the roasting process the bean is filled with CO2. It should be left for around 8 to 10 days so that the coffee is more expressive. Once the roasting process is finished, how do we know if the fruit has been harvested from the farm? Visually, we can see if the kernel or the seed is in good condition. We always take the humidity, the density of the bean, and this gives us a reference of how much energy we should apply in the roasting process. There are different processes of processing. The coals make the bean much more delicate. So we have to treat these coffees in a special way. How do we know that the coffee has been harvested properly? The beans that I have in my right hand are beans that do not have the same presence of sugar as those that I have on my left hand. This happens because they are harvested from immature beans. So we only realize this at the moment of roasting the coffee. When this happens, what we do is that we manually separate the beans in the packing and we leave only the brown beans so that they do not affect the flavor of the cup at the time of preparing the beverage. It is true that technology has helped the growth of the industry, the producers from the field to the main work. Thanks to their effort and experience with the land, as well as the ripening times and climatic knowledge, it has been demonstrated that coffee in Colombia is considered as a product of excellence. A tree takes around two years to produce the first bean and in eight or ten minutes in which we do the roasting process, we can ruin that coffee. We are damaging a gigantic work that goes backwards. So we must be conscious that we are working with raw materials that are not ours and that we must deliver the best of our coffee to the client. Being responsible because there is a great deal of work, the geography of the coffee plantations is very difficult. The, to extract a package of coffee, it is necessary to go through very large hills. And we have to be conscious that there is a great deal of work involved in processing the coffee. When it is a coffee that has many attributes, that has the presence of aromatics of fruits, if we do not roast it correctly, all the delicate attributes of the coffee will be lost because they will volatilize and we will have much more presence of bitterness. The sugar caramel that is present in it will become bitter and all the delicate attributes will be lost. So a correct roasting process has a great influence. So a correct roasting process has a great influence. Coffee growers are changing their thinking. They are transforming their raw material. To this is added the added value of selling roasted and ground coffee, not selling it as a beverage. It is not the same to sell the load of coffee as to sell the processed coffee because there is a much more greater value. Then there comes into play the process of processing, how they collect the coffee how they ferment the coffee, and that makes their product have much more value. 
Como dice Jorge, as George says, as roasters, they have the commitment and responsibility to conserve the essence that the coffee brings from the farm, giving it the best potential so that the result of the beverage is the best. It is time to review the photographs that you share with us through the email epicentrotvagro at gmail.com. This is our section closer to the field and Britt Gomez sends us the picture of two horses that apparently like to pose for the camera. Perfect for the selfie. There it is. And this picture is perfect in the background. That palm tree that makes the landscape look spectacular. Juan David Bustamante from RV Park sends us two pictures of beautiful flowers of the Lantana genus. When placing these plants, it is very important to keep in mind that they need a lot of sunlight because sunlight will help them to reproduce their flowers. Perfect, super colorful and very beautiful. Valentina Sanchez Londoño sends us two pictures of a car from La Merci del Playón in Liborina. The calf is posing, pretending to be in a photographic studio. Very nice animal. Jaime Rozo sends us a picture of a velvet tanaja, or also called a red-tailed tanaja. It is native to southern Mexico and Central America. Jaime tells us that it, it was taken in the Chaparro village in Guani, in the department of Antiqua. Super cute, very nice bird. Thank you very much for participating in the section closer to the field TV. Remember that you can send any photo or video that brings you closer to the field to the email epicentrotvagro at gmail.com or post them on the networks with a hashtag Maserca del Campo TV. And so we end this new chapter of Epicenter. To you, thank you very much for joining us. Remember our social networks and email to us your comments and everything you want to share with us. Thank you for being active. See you.